When I came out last October, it was a pretty significant moment in my life, and I wanted to commemorate that with a tattoo. But when I was scrolling down my Instagram feed about pride tattoos, I wasn't particularly inspired. So I decided to take a different route. Today, we're going to be talking about my pride tattoo. So far, I have four tattoos. Here they are. Can you guess which one is my pride tattoo? It's this one. Today, we're gonna talk about how this tattoo and the symbols that make it up represent me and my identity. Like I said, it was a huge deal for me to come out as non-binary and it changed a lot of aspects of my life. Maybe not to the world around me, but definitely internally, which made it kind of similar to when I converted to Buddhism a few years ago, which I also got a tattoo for, but that's neither here nor there. The tattoo that I ended up getting to represent my non-binary identity actually also reflects my Buddhist identity or my Buddhist practice. When I was trying to figure out what I wanted to have permanently etched into my body, I was trying to think of symbols or people or whatever that might represent that fluidity of gender or the transformation of gender. And actually, I happened to find it in my Buddhist practice. If you're familiar with Japanese Buddhism, you might know this figure, this entity. You may know her as either Kanon-sama or Kanzeon. And in English, her name translates to the perceiver of the world sounds. Originally, when she was conceived of in India, she was actually male. She had a masculine honorific, and it wasn't until she traveled through China and Japan later on in history that she became female. And I really identified with that change, with that transformation. So I thought that honoring her would be a great representation of my identity. And that was the concept behind my tattoo when I went to Cast of Crowns, I think at the end of last year. If you don't know, Cast of Crowns is an amazing tattoo and piercing parlor in Elisa Viejo. If you happen to be around there, definitely go check it out. They're amazing. Eventually, after figuring out sort of what I wanted, I was referred to Sierra Vaughn. And I'm gonna take a minute, this is Sierra, and her social media, her work is incredible. And it was a great fit matching what I already had. And so I was referred to her and she was great. She totally understood where my concept was coming from and was really supportive and the changes that I made to include aspects of my pride. I was really fortunate. Sierra was kind enough to pass along the video that kind of showed her design process with my tattoo. And so we'll go through that in just a second, but I want to explain the different aspects of this tattoo and what I asked to have included. Symbols that eventually ended up in this tattoo included a mirror. And the mirror is significant because a mirror, that a full mirror, is supposed to represent like a deluded mind. The reflection of reality that we see, not the one that we're actually experiencing. So a lack of enlightenment. And so I thought that having a cracked mirror might be a really cool way to acknowledge that I was seeing beyond the surface level and pursuing a more enlightened mind. Another symbol that I wanted to include was a lasso or a rope of some kind, because according to Kanon's iconography, a lasso or a rope might represent catching souls or binding attachments. And that seemed to really resonate with me. I don't know if I can explain why, but I really liked the image of like it saving my soul because by accepting my own identity, 
it helped with my mental health a lot and greatly reduced my experience with like anxiety and depression, which can lead to some pretty negative side effects. So for me, it had kind of saved me to identify this way. Another sign that I had included, or I guess two signs that I had included were the lotus flower and the eight point wheel, which are both pretty universal Buddhist symbols, right? The lotus represents our lotus sutra that we use in our practice, but also like the cause and effect of karma and the eight point wheel represents the eightfold path, which is like a fundamental part of Buddhism. So with those kind of Buddhist symbols included to represent the bodhisattva, the entity that I felt represented my identity, I also asked that we include the non-binary pride colors. And if you're not familiar with that, here they are on the screen real quick. We got yellow or gold, white, purple, and black. So I asked her to include those colors if possible. And eventually I also asked her to include my pronoun, just they though, to include my pronoun they in the tattoo. And with all of that in mind, let's take a look at how she designed the tattoo that I now have. Sierra and I went back and forth on a mirror that we thought might be a good fit. And here is the original image. And she made modifications to the reference image to incorporate the elements to best represent what I was asking for. As you can see, she included my pronouns, or she included my pronoun in the cracks here and she highlighted it by making it a little bit thicker so that maybe it would be a little more clear, um, but also not too, uh, obnoxious isn't really the right word, but like too bold so that if I needed to pass for some reason and not share my identity, it wasn't going to be a problem either. So you'll see there that she was experimenting with ways to incorporate the rope element around the mirror and ultimately didn't go with that. So she put points around the mirror to kind of nod to the spokes of the wheel uh, without being too blatant about it. So now you'll see that she's including the rope element by sculpting some of the decorative elements of the reference mirror to look more like a rope than just plain metal. So here you'll notice that she made the top of it look like a lotus flower. And now more of the rope. And then she starts to go through and paint or like color the image. And she's using the yellow gold color for the base of the frame. And then she actually, I don't know if you can see it in the image, but she's actually shading with purple so that there are kind of subtle elements of this purple color that is in the pride flag in the shading of the image. And then of course the outline is black and the like reflective parts of the mirror are white. Oh, that is my pride tattoo. That is how it was designed and the elements involved and why I feel like it represents my identity. Do you guys have pride tattoos? If you do, tell me about them in the comments or you can show them to me by sending them to me on Twitter. My handle is at nonbifairy somewhere on the screen and if we have enough interest, maybe we'll do a video on what your pride tattoos look like. But for now, I think that that just about wraps up today's Dream Life video. So I'm non bi fairy. This is Queer to Help. Live your dream life. Whew.